All right, good morning. Today is Friday, the whatever today is. Um, this is, I don't know, the fourth day that we're working on these guys. All right, so today I'm going to try to get them to the point where they're pretty much done and ready for their eyebrows. If, if I have time, I'll do eyebrows. If not, I'll come back tomorrow for that eyebrows and hairlines. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit more facial details on little Maya. Um, just because if you see how pink her hands and feet are, her face doesn't really reflect that yet. So we have to make them kind of um, match in a, a manner of speaking. Um, so I'm gonna use my darker paint, the same stuff I was using yesterday. I'm, I watered it down a little bit because it got thick through being open a lot yesterday. Um, okay, so the next sponge I'm gonna use is another one of my modeling sponges. I made this one to be super dense and, and miniature sized holes on it. I made this one to use for cheeks like a topical model to make it look like baby's got cheek modeling. So I'm going to swirl the paint that I just um, thin down a little bit. It's still going to be thicker than what I would put on as a normal model because it's supposed to be a topical model and I want it to be visible. Um, so then I'm going to touch the cheeks in that same triangle area and then I'm going to kind of gently with my blending brush and blend out the edges of that modeling and that leaves her with a little more cheek texture. I'm going to repeat that on her other cheek. There seems to be a line forming right here and I want to smooth that out because I don't want there to be any really lines of where there's color and where there's not. All right, so I'm gonna take the same brush without dipping it again and go up her temple and onto her forehead area. You have to work in smaller areas with this one so that it doesn't dry out before you can get it to the color you want it. You don't smooth it completely out. You're wanting some of that texture to stay put and stay behind. And it's okay if it's not completely smooth because everybody has blotchy patches on their skin. Um, that is not completely smooth and perfect and that's what we're trying to duplicate. And remember our little spot right here yesterday. I'm going to emphasize that a titch more. And any extra paint on my brush, I'm going to add to the eyebrow areas. All right, I'm going to add a little more paint for the back of the head, or a little more thinner to the back of the head. Um, area so that it doesn't go on so bright. The back of the head, I'm wanting it to be a little less bright because I'm wanting it to be more um, there, I guess. Now I'm going to use my sponge, pick off the cat hairs. We had cats in the house yesterday from outside because it was raining and they left hair everywhere. Darn little buggers. I'm 
This kind of almost gives it a bit of a rashy look, which I guess most newborn photographers would probably try to edit out and smooth out. But in reality, that's what we're looking for is the realism of having those pieces and parts there. A little bit of that modeling. It just looks so much more realistic. All right, so I'm going to put that away for now. And I'm going to do some tiny baby Milia, which is the little tiny white uh, skin looking zit things that come across the nose and the cheeks. For that, I'm going to use, I honestly don't even know what color this is, Flesh 08 or 02, I don't know. Not quite white, but not quite the brown nail tip. This is the actual color I use for nail tips as well, though. Um, so I'm going to, this color hasn't been used for a while, so I'm going to kind of stir up the top layer. I don't even take this out of the jar. I leave it there. But I want the top layer to be wet so that when I use my tool, it will be able to pick up the paint without being so thick and chunky. All right, now this is a tool. I have no idea what its actual official name is supposed to be, but it came with my ceramic cleaning stuff. Um, maybe an awl. I'm not really sure. It's a pokey tool that I've had for a million years. I have no idea where to even purchase another one, maybe in the sculpting section. I'm not sure. But this is what we have found to make the best milia. So I'm going to dab the white paint. You can't really see anything on the tip of my brush and that's okay, you don't want too much there. And I'm just gonna touch very carefully in a variegated pattern on the nose until the paint runs off the tip of my tool. And it's okay to have some darker and some lighter. Try to keep your um, location of them kind of a consistent spacing. And I know they look a little bit bright right now, but I'm not going to tap them down to soften them up until they've sat a little bit. Otherwise, they will smear all over and make a mess. And I'm not pushing very hard, just a tiny light, light dollop does the trick. Now these are super, super bright right now and I would not leave these this bright, but you'll see in a minute that they fade down a little bit. I'm going to put a couple on the nostril flange. Sometimes when I rotate my little tool around it, it'll take another section of, of dots put on. And if it gets too gunky so it's not making even and round dots, I'll wipe it off and start with a fresh dollop. Try not to go at it from the side because it makes an oblong.
almost done, I think. I think I'm going to put a little bit at the very tip of the nose. I don't want these to be very bright, though. That one's a little bright. I don't want that there. So I'm going to blow on these for a few seconds or waft some air onto them because I don't want them wet when I try to blend them down. All right. The clean finger, I'm going to tap. now and it probably doesn't look like it's doing much but it is fading it gently so it's below the surface level and smearing it in so that it's not so topical and bright and like somebody threw some I don't know, white paint on the baby. All right, so that's the first step of these. You can see how cute that looks. All right, so now in, in order to actually sink it a little more, I'm pulling out my yellow again. And I'm using a red detail paintbrush that's super tiny fine. This is even smaller than my normal detail brush. And I'm going to go into the wet paint and then I'm going to kind of gently touch on top of most of my spots. And this takes it from that bright white color down to kind of the more natural zitty that's kind of a gross word but the natural color and I'm gonna come back with my clean stiffer blending brush and tap them some more and that will help sink them the rest of the way um, and I like to try to leave one realistic one that actually looks like it's kind of bigger so I'm going to pick one that looks like it stands out. So I'm going to pick this one right here. Um, and so now my next step is I'm going to go to my brighter red that I use for my modeling. And I'm going to use the same tiny brush that I just did the yellow with. And get the brush wet with just the lighter, not so bright paint. And if you use a bigger brush on this, it's going to make a big mess. It's, it's got to be tiny. I'm going to very gently just tap around the circle of that. And it's going to enhance that one little spot. All right. I think this little one is ready for eyebrows and her fine, his fine baby hairs. <laughs> 